so I'll start recording as well. Did I start recording? Okay. Yes, we're recording. Hello and welcome. Welcome all of you beautiful souls. We are I have a, such a wonderful treat to have uh, Sherry Divan and Honey C. Golden on this video, this um, interview and, you know, more of an informal chat to touch base on where we've been, where we're headed and where uh, we are right now. Uh, so past, present, future. So we're going to go ahead and talk about um, a myriad of things, not just the, um, uh, you know, children or kids or the, the younger years, but we're going to talk about everything. And we are excited to be here to share this with you. Uh, so I'd like to have uh, both of you just quickly introduce yourself. Uh, many of the folks listening, you already know, and you're very attuned to Honey and Sherry and myself, hopefully, but um, just to make sure we're all on the same page. Uh, so Honey, if you wanted to start, and then we'll have Sherry uh, follow. Sure. So I'm an energy healer, and I started out with Reiki, and then continued through zone method and I talk to my higher self, so I'm always in contact with my soul, and I get a lot of information from my soul. I have books out on Amazon um, for kids, actually, and I talk about a lot of things that have to do with the subconscious and the genetic line and the soul and shadow work, so I actually have several programs out there but the most important one at the moment if you want to systematically heal is called the journey to you so that is probably the most important one but it is you are seriously working on yourself if you're doing that so i also have healing with honey but there's a lot of things that are happening right now that those things can help you with because it starts with the subconscious and eventually we get into the conscious. But if we can drive with the conscious mind, then we are winning, is my opinion. So that's me. That's me. That's <laughs> fantastic. Thank you. Uh -huh. And uh, Sherry, for most of the folks watching as well, you need no introduction. Uh, I know in my tender years of um, just four years ago, but uh, I was watching you um, and learning so much. So I'd love for you to um, talk about and just introduce, introduce yourself. Yeah, it's well, it's a pleasure to be with you ladies today. I, I love <clears throat> bringing in the divine feminine energy and working together. Um, it's beautiful. And honey, what you said, I love what you said. Um, I, I can't quote you, but I think it was, I mean, constant communication with my soul, I think is what you said. <laughs> I love that. I'm going to make that like a like a bumper sticker or something that that was perfect i love how you said that beautifully said um my yeah <laughs> so i am the founder of aramis creative learning center so i focus a lot of my work on um starseed children uh, shifting the educational platform but i also do intuitive energy healing and animal communication and soul readings so kind of looking more i i feel like over the years i started with reiki and then it morphed into kind of looking at the soul and then in inwards so it's more quantum healing and less working on the physical body of uh, communicating with gal galactic beings and spirit guides to help facilitate uh an environment where the blocks kind of just fall off and once people are empowered and they um, recognize their sovereignty the illusion breaks and and it's um, really a more about helping people just do the work themselves and get rid of helping to get rid of the savior complex that we have uh this virus through the collective of you know going outside of ourselves. we all have the innate wisdom within us and i think that Honey's doing that in her sessions and Dana, when you, when you work with women to help them with empowered births and so many people and through books, I mean, uh, there's lots of different ways to do it, but I think it's really important to empower people. And so I work with adults and children and animals, um, in various ways, but I, my baby, my, my passion is working with the starseed children and creating an educational platform that benefits them, that helps them thrive as opposed to limits them and so that's really my my biggest focus. That is fantastic. Oh, wow. Thank you. And for those of you who may or may not be in, uh, aware of uh, myself, I'm Dana. And uh, I have a platform called From Fertility to Delivery. I started late in life, 
uh, in my late 30s, uh, 36 being married, 38 getting pregnant for the first time. And those numbers are not fun for um, in this our society and our culture. They're actually looked down upon and they're called geriatric pregnancy. So uh, we have a long way to go to heal that. And my journey helped me figure out that I was connecting with my spirit baby uh, throughout the whole process of parenthood and creating a family. I stopped saying trying to, con to conceive because that phrase that actually stops fertility and creates infertility, puts you on a hamster wheel. I talk a lot about that in some of my videos. And uh, I started to connect with a spirit baby that I already had connected with in a QHHT session with, um, uh, with a, a wonderful practitioner. And his soul was my son in Lemire, uh, sorry, Atlantis. And then he came back to be my, my son now. And I actually had a, a session with Sherry um, and our first son uh, about his journey. So, and he is five years old now. And then the birth aspect, it was really interesting. I have a grandmother that has had nine children on the islands of Bahamas and, um, and Jamaica. And those were all home births. So those were all at home. They're beautiful. And she just kept popping in throughout the whole pregnancy. And I knew I had to take from her, take a book from her, uh, a page from her book and have that natural birth that I wanted to have. So I did that uh, in a hospital setting, but I did go through hypnobirthing. And it was magical and mystical and wonderful. And our son, he, our first son, he came the same day as her birthday and she would have been a hundred years old that day. Wow. So that was a huge sign from the ancestors that I was on the right path. And this was actually my divinely guided purpose on the planet and also a humanitarian project for myself as well and my business. And um, the the, the actual imprinting that happens when we are born is so important. So that's something that we have to clean up because it doesn't look good right now and we really need to get it cleared up. So that's a little tidbit of myself and the history. And as we are talking about history, we're going to talk about where we've been. Um, so Sherry, if you want to start, of, um, you know, you talked to, you touched on it, but um, you have your book that came out. <laughs> Star Seas and a Great Awakening. I, I don't have time to read books, like physical books. I do audio books because <laughs> I have a, a four-year-old who just turned four last week and a five-year-old. And this was a book that I actually, I dedicated to reading it. And I spent time actually sitting down and reading. Oh. And it was fantastic, Sherry. So I wanted you to talk about this book, which goes over a lot of the history of where we've been and, um, you know, talk about this a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, thank you for that testimonial. I, you know, a lot of people have said, I don't even read books and I read your book. I was so proud of myself. And I, I'm, that makes me happy because I am a big reader, uh, but I don't like a lot of authors' styles personally because I feel like they try, like, or so trained to like make it poetic and put all these big words. And then I, then I get, I, people lose me. So I always write like I'm just talking, like I'm having a conversation with you. And, and either people hate it or they they love it. And so um, more people seem to love it than hate it, which is great. <laughs> um, yeah, so the Star Seeds and the Great Awakening book is, it, it was a jump in my comfort level, let's just say, because I have been one of those people always, well, not always, but for a very long time. Once my spiritual awakening began and I changed as a person, I became n the opposite. So non-confrontational. Uh, less egocentric, um, more of a peacekeeper. Like I'm not interested in debating. I don't want to fight with any, because I had spent most of my life fighting everybody and getting ready to fight. I was just always charged. And I like a rhino, like I felt like I was just ready to go at anybody because I just assumed everyone was out to get me because of my traumas growing up. That when my son came and opened my heart and cracked it open, I went from this mean rhino to like I feel like I'm this beautiful uh female elephant like that's how I feel now like this gentle soul that has so much wisdom to share with the world and that's how I feel like I'm more from this rhino to an elephant um and so my first two books was still in me in that transformational process so I was kind of very much like I don't want to piss anybody off I want to be very politically correct and I want people to heal but I'm not going to say everything I want to say because I don't want to be too woo woo because I, and there were so many things I was worried about how people would perceive me and how they would take the information and would I, would people hate me? 
Uh, and then the third book came around and my, and I just felt like I went through so much and I said, I'm done with pretending and playing Miss like in between and neutral. And I said, I'm putting everything into this book, everything that I know that I was afraid to say publicly, I'm putting it in there. And I shared things about my life that I, I will tell you something I shared about some, um, um, uh, what's it called? Uh, sexual abuse that I endured as a child that my own father didn't know about until I was about to publish the book. And I said, dad, I need you to read this section of the book and let's talk about it before I publish it because you need to know before everyone else. And like that was healing for us because he had no idea. I had I hid it from everybody. Literally only two people in my life knew about it. And I was like in my 20s before I shared. So um, so there's a lot of me in this book. And I it's very raw. And there's so much of me that's grown. And through that wisdom, I share everything. And I don't worry in this book. I'm not worried about what people think of me because I feel like if they're meant to read it, they will and it will resonate. And if they're not meant to read it, they won't. So I share uh, a lot about children and star seeds and the origin and why I believe that they're here and their characteristics and their um, and their abilities and the labels and why these children are labeled incorrectly and what they're actually here to do. And I go into all the different types of star seeds that I have learned about myself through my sessions with children and adults. And then the middle part of the book is really important because it goes into 3D interference. So what are all the things that I think people need to know that I was afraid to say before because I didn't want to be too woo-woo. All the things that are designed in our 3D reality to prohibit us, to inhibit our innate abilities, to block us so we don't remember, so we don't know, so our light doesn't shine. Because despite the fact that everyone says this is a, a duality space, it actually is not. Because it's really a low frequency of fear, resentment, shame, sexual charged energy, egocentric power and manipulation. And that's not duality. Like they don't want the light to shine. Um, they want it to shine just enough. So you feel like you're, you have power, but really it, you don't. And the 3d interference section was me coming out and saying, listen, you have to know about all of these things in our reality that are designed to block us, block the children and block the adults. Um, and it's a lot, it's a lot of different, it's a lot of different things that I go into. It's not a full list, of course, because I, it would be, uh, the book would never stop. But I talk about the things that I personally have experience with through my sessions in that section of the book. And then the third section of the book is me going into where I see us going. Like, let's end it on a positive note. Like, just because of all of this, what do we do with this information? How do we empower ourselves? How do we choose not to consent? What are some changes we can make? And where do I see us going in the future based on the sessions that I'm having with adults and children? Um, and the changes that I see coming in the future so that we can end it with, uh, you know, enlightening people, charging people in a positive way and hopefully inspiring them to make change, to think differently um, and to not be afraid to go into their healing journey because the healing journey is quite scary uh, and it's not easy. It's actually so much easier just to be blind just to maintain in the illusion, just to drink, just to party, just to go day to day and not deal with everything. Just put it under the rug. I could just go through my life completely numb and I don't and not even pretend like I don't see it because that's real simple compared to facing it all, embracing it and surrendering to the healing journey and rep and recognizing that all your traumas have actually led to something beautiful and there is learning involved and you can look at everything in such a beautiful way. Um, that I think that we're missing. That there's a disconnect there and we're not taught that as children. So as adults, we are so bitter, so angry, we're so resentful. We have so much guilt. We have so much shame as a result of all of this potential that we lost throughout our lives because we were not guided in the right way. And it starts from the time we are born. And when I taught hypnobirthing, it was some, one of the most enlightening experience for myself because I had three traumatic births that again, I didn't want to share with people because it was so intimate, so traumatic and so disappointing. And the reason I think I felt such a passion about helping people is I discovered a past life that I had when I was a Lemurian midwife. And I helped bring souls into the world in Lemuria. And I believe that that aspect of me came alive during that period and still is. And I wanted nothing more than to help other women not experience what I experienced 
and to show that there is a better way. And I learned so much from that opportunity that I think that actually is what led me to working with children because I started to communicate with the soul of the child through the mom during the sessions of hypnobirthing. Um, and that was a wild ride that I didn't see coming. Um, and so that that's all incorporated into the book. Um, and I think that it's important for people to know where we've been and know how to integrate all of that knowledge and make shifts and changes and heal now so that we can project a much brighter future where we are actually in control. We are actually sovereign and not being told that we are when, when we're actually not. Uh, and this is a beautiful period in our history where we have the potential to expand and evolve in such a dynamic way that I believe that there is no going back. Um, but we just have to work together as a community. And hopefully my contribution can be these books to inspire people or my podcast to inspire and awaken people or my contribution working with children to help the parents understand them because the children already know. It's the parents that need to, they need some guidance on how do I, how do I work with this child that is telling me about past lives and sees everything I can't see and knows things that I don't understand. How do I navigate through that? And they need help. Uh, and, and so that's where I come in, I, I believe, as best I can. Yeah, that is beautiful. And uh, it, it's it's such a wonderful collection of experiences that you bring to the table. I love it. And uh, Honey as well, uh, not just the Hidden hi History series, but um, things that you've seen in the past that you'd love to share. Sure. So I started out with kind of a unique childhood. So a lot of my stuff got started when I was really little. And I remember probably back to about 18 months, I have memories. And I grew up with hippie parents who didn't get stoned, basically. So they were just being in the hippie experience, but they were fully present, which was really helpful to me because we grew up in a hippie community and there weren't that many fully present people there but we were kind of the oddballs in that group and I remember being extremely know-it-all when I was a little kid and really up until I was married I was very solid and I knew exactly what I felt was the right and wrong of the world what was going on in the outside of the world like there was a whole lot of information that I had and when I went into marriage, I feel like I lost a little bit of it because I was busy pleasing, you know, the people pleasing. And this is an ex-husband. <laughs> but you go through like these experiences and you realize that you can lose yourself in the process of caretaking others. So I think one of the things that we're learning right now is to be truly sovereign and sovereign means you take care of you first, and then you take care of other people. So you don't run yourself absolutely ragged. And another part of it is allowing other people to heal. So it's kind of ironic, but I actually have children's books on Amazon, and they are about being creative. So the little girl that's in this book called The Land of Nola she goes back to finish what her mother didn't finish. And her mother had created a whole world. But the world didn't have any stars. So she went back to create those. And she had to deal with all the people that live there. And get their agreement and go through the process and do all this stuff. And I feel like that's kind of what we're doing right now. And that book was written with my father probably 20 years ago. So we wrote that a long time ago, put it out maybe 10 years ago, and it just has started to gain traction now. So it really is like, this is something that is relevant now. And the kids coming in, they don't have the programming and they also don't have the DNA issues that we've had in the past. So our bodies have had to be rebuilt as we go through this process through frequency and change, but their bodies are coming in intact. They don't have 
those changes that are making them feel small and makes it easier for the programming to stick. They're just saying no. And I think that's a really big thing for right now because the kids will eventually be the ones who teach us. There's going to be like a transitionary period where we teach them and give them space to learn. But eventually they'll be showing things to us that we didn't know. And I think that's part of the magic of everything that's going on. And we are in these processions right now, like the procession of the equinox, the Hopi prophecy, the Mayan calendar, all that stuff is like culminating right now. And we're in this beautiful time. And yes, there's tons of hidden history that I tapped into. But I feel like even some of that will morph slightly because as it as we grow, as we become more open, our soul can actually give us a clearer picture because we're not seeing through the filtration of the programming. So things will get clearer and clearer. And the biggest thing for me lately has been to learn about parallels, to understand them, to understand the multiverse, and to understand like who we really are, which has been huge. So the inner child work has been really massive for me lately. Yeah. Wow, but that is fantastic. <laughs> Absolutely. And, you know, that that history and happening into parallel lives, which we do call past lives, but now we know that they are parallel lives. They're happening in the moment of now. Mm -hmm. Those are outstanding and they're, they're very jarring at times. And especially with the mother wound that started happening to uh, around last year, as we started clearing out that mother wound, I started connecting with past lives. And these are things that I haven't really journaled on or dived deep in, but I know that uh, and we're, you know, we're going to keep this a, a very kosher video, but I knew I was some sort of uh, breeder for the dark players. And I don't even know what that looks like. Um, I, I will dabble in it when I'm ready, but it was, it was very interesting going through fertility, pregnancy, everything was easy. And then childbirth came and I was completely shut down. I, I didn't know if I could do it. I, I, I was riddled with fear. And what I had to hold on to was my grandmother's one had five children on the islands of Jamaica and the other one that I talked about earlier with the nine children. They did it at home and I had that DNA running through my veins and I knew I could do it. And the weird part about after the childhood is that uh, uh, the pregnancy was that after I had the baby, I didn't have, everything was very effortless until that point. And then it felt like I wasn't, I was supposed to give the baby up. I didn't even know where that came from. And it was hard to be a, a first time mother. And then mm -hmm. I knew, okay, this is something I need to look into because this is something that I've done over and over in past lives. I even signed up to be a surrogate because it was so easy. Not going to because they, you know, they cut it off right at 40 years old. God forbid you're a surrogate after 40 years old. Mm -hmm. But um, it, there was something there. I'm like, I need to, I need to heal this. And this is my life purpose. So it's good yeah. to go deep and to figure out what's happening and what has happened. You don't have to know all the gory details, but to know mm -hmm. what, what has happened and to really uh, use it to propel yourself into the present which is where we're going to start talking now. Um, I have had, I've had the, the treat and the um, ability to invest in healing with honey and also in Sherry's um, child experience with um, going back into the lineage of uh, our, our firstborn, uh, finding out that he was seventh density, which I didn't even think that was possible, um, and that he was from another universe and just learning all of these beautiful attributes. So if we could start talking about that, that would be uh, wonderful. What what you're doing now on the planet, both of you, uh, Sherry and Honey, to connect people to their divine uh, essence and move them forward and help propel them. So we can go ahead and start with Sherry and then we'll move over to Honey. Yeah, uh, <clears throat> I think this is such an important, um, just an important conversation because what you mentioned uh, just a second ago, you didn't know it was possible and, and your son is seventh density and also the parallel realities versus the time matrix that we are, we are, time is 
all we, I know we say time is an illusion, but it actually is real here. <laughs> so we're living it. We, we feel it. We see it every day. Um, and that's part of our limitations, but we are dynamic. We are multidimensional beings and we do have many life uh, in many incarnations, fractals of our soul's essence that separate into these different lifetimes experience. Um, and sometimes we do go, I have a lot of clients that were in the tunnels or in dark lives, let's just say. But what I learned from a lot of them is their soul chose to be in a dark space to illuminate it, to expose it, to get more information, to find out more, um, to access things and to shift the energy so that it starts to break down over time. They're all, all of these are just seeds that we're planting. Um, and then they take hold and the energy grows and shifts and, and, and expands and does so many things passively. It doesn't always mean that we physically have to do something. So it's just, it, that just in and of itself blows my mind when I'm, when I'm in my own awakening to put all the pieces together and truly understand all the elements, because I think we're limited in our perception and in our human brain to really perceive all the parts. It's just, it's too much for us to take in. But as we have all of these dimensions and all of these different realities that are parallel, the, the veil in between used to be very strong at least in the third dimension, uh, as in, in, the, in the sense of what we had access to, so that there was a clear division in between. But now we're seeing over the years, so many bleed through memories where we are accessing these other versions of ourself. And I believe it's because we're supposed to be able to do that, but also because we're able to pull wisdom from each part of ourself. Like I pulled the wisdom of my Lemurian version of myself when I was working with women to help them have an empowered birth. What do I know in this life? I had three traumatic births. Who am I to train women to have a better birth than me when I hadn't experienced it? But I had to get through that ego and say, no, no, I have a lot to contribute because I was pulling in this wisdom from this other version of myself who did do that, who was I did a beautiful job back then and I was able to help many thousands of women. And I think that a lot of us are doing that. We're pulling in the wisdom but not just from our human lives. So there's a lot of star seeds, children coming through, and I say children, but they're star seed, they're beings coming in as children first, uh, to bring wisdom from other places, other universes, from Pleiades, from Lyra, from uh, from Inner Earth, from Shambhala, so many different places to bring in technology, wisdom, information, healing techniques, and all of these things that we are now bringing together in this beautiful collection here on earth in the 3D to help expand it and break it down. I use the analogy um, actually this morning in another interview, if you can imagine a humanity or the 3D as a, as a cardboard box that was closed up so tight that no light was coming through. And I feel like that was the control grid that we talk about. And as star seeds have been coming in for thousands of years, they were only were able to poke maybe one little tiny pinhole and it wasn't, it didn't really do a lot because the there was so much darkness that the people they were trying to awaken weren't ready yet. It wasn't set up for that. But even that one little pinhole in, in the grand scheme of things did shine a little bit of light, which helped for the next one to come in and the next one. And Dolores talk, Cannon talks about the first wave. I feel like that caused a lot of lights now to shine, the poking holes everywhere that it made waves for the next wave to come through. And now more light and more light and more light. And now we've gotten to the point where we have so many conscious beings on this planet, so many ascended beings here contributing to the collective awakening that the box is literally like it's lost its integrity and it's truly breaking down. And not only is there light coming through everywhere, I mean, the sides are falling apart. I mean, the whole thing is breaking down. And I think that's a beautiful way to, to validate or to understand the changes that are taking place as the 3D grid breaks down, the veil thins. We, the children like Honey said, come in with activated DNA, with their knowings, their sovereignty is still intact. They're not, they're not responding to the 3D interference like the generations before. It's not working on them. They're indestructible. They're, they're you, you can't, actually, it doesn't work on them. So all of this is a collection of beautiful, intricacies, different details of at passive energy, active energy, all this um, representing all aspects of the universe. So it's the cosmos uh, to assist in this grand awakening, this great awakening um, that's happening intimately right here. But there's so many parts and so many beings 
from all over, representing all over the cosmos, assisting with this transition right now in this now moment, which it, which makes it so beautiful to really focus on this present moment, not look in the past, not look to the future, but just enjoy this space right now because it's actually quite beautiful uh, to be a part of it, you know, in the physical sense um, and actually see the breakdown and the rebuild all occurring in our lifetime, which is really cool. Mm -hmm. I love what you said there, honey, uh, Sherry, with regards to uh, folks that are in bodies now, if our physical body, we were to go to the 1920s, the 18, uh, late 1800s, those folks would see us as just a body of light. That's how, that's how fast we're moving. Um, exactly. honey, you talk about that a lot with the fan, how it, um, once the blades are moving, you don't see it. And that's really uh, where mm. our galactic brothers and sisters are. And uh, that is beautiful. So honey, um, if you could share, you know, where you're at today, uh, some epiphanies you've had and um, what you, where you're at. Um, I am at like a really happy place right now. I feel like we're kind of crossing into the better part of Ascension and people that are mm -hmm. still in the process of healing some of the really big things, they're still coming. Maybe they're just coming a little slower, but we're all here together and we're going through this process and we haven't made it before. So that's been kind of the, one of the epiphanies lately that I've been talking about. It's not a new one, but we tried to go through Ascension back in the Jesus times. We tried again in the late 1800s when the scouts were here and I feel like a lot of those scouts just could not maintain the frequency. And then in the sixties, again, when the hippies were here and then the drugs were introduced and the hippie movement kind of went sideways. And now we're here in the process of it one more time, but we've gotten further than we've ever gotten before. And we've gotten past the tipping point. Because the souls that created more of the polarity, more of the trauma, which they agreed to do, but I feel like some of them almost got lost in it because you can create so many shadows within the oversoul that it's more shadow than light. And there's more healing than maybe you're willing to do as a soul. So a lot of those souls have now basically passed on they've gone back to source to be pure energy and they will come out in a different way so they won't be carrying all that trauma because a lot of the learning that we've done has been really rough here on earth and whether you're on this earth or an earth in the multiverse in some other version we've been really struggling and just like Sherry said, we haven't been able to see the other parallels. So for me, it's been the cool things have been like watching the different aspects of my soul come in, being able to clear away the things that were in the way for me and now teach others how to do that. Like to be able to clear away the programming clear away the genetic line of programming that they've had the trauma and the the darkness too because we have to heal everything in the process of ascension so if you have a shadow aspect it's important to heal that shadow aspect and to welcome it home so that you are more and more whole and it's easier to ascend because we're not here to leave things behind parts of ourselves. So that's why it's really important to start with you. And I feel like a lot of people that's been really scary and we've been bypassing that. And we've been looking outside, you know, at all of the drama that's been going on. And yes, we needed that to awaken because that was a catalyst but we don't really need it anymore. And as soon as we take our attention away from it, it's gonna start to disperse. Just like the souls who started it are dispersed. And I think that's been the biggest epiphany. Um, the inner child 
is massive. That is what we're ascending. So the inner child consciousness is the ascension process. Like that's who we're ascending. And I feel like that was a really big epiphany, probably maybe a month ago for me. And then just talking about it a lot and really working on the inner child has been huge with people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. When you brought that up, I, it, and you started talking about connecting with your joy and doing things that you love. I started coloring pretty much mm -hmm. every day after that. And it's been uh, wonderful ever since, but yeah, also cleaning up the genetic line, the, um, uh, the DNA lines with healing with honey that you do in your process. And th th that's fantastic. When it comes mm -hmm. to um, what you learn, once you learn it, share with others. We talked about that when we talked about Archangel Haniel and um, the advice that she would give in the video we did um, on the angels. And that is really important. If I kept this information to myself, I wouldn't have been able to help um, cousins that live in Bahamas that are having um, their first first births and just like you uh, Sherry like you said you know you had the traumatic births but then you came and offered uh, your vision of how a birth a beautiful birth is because you tapped into it from a past life and I think that's that is just so key so taking what we've learned and applying it to where we're headed and um, for me it's um, it, it it feels kind of crunchy because I've only had two births, but how many births do I need to, you know, yeah. help? <laughs> exactly. how many people, how many, you know, how many babies do I really need to have to help um, people grow? Uh, and my hypnobirthing practitioner, she had never had a, a child before. She was a doula. She was an amazing doula. And she really unpacked everything for me. So I knew exactly what was happening during the process. And I was so grateful for her because it didn't happen with my gynecologist. And uh, for those of you that have those trauma aspects, I am working on a, a video that I'm going to put on YouTube that's more of a healing exercise to clear that trauma. Because you know, that uh, not only your personal birth that you exited the womb with your with you know through your mother, but also the birth that you've given. And I've man, I've heard some horror stories, but those yeah. it's time for us to let those go so as we move into the future and the next step of our chat now is uh, what does the future look like for for your your humanitarian pro project what do you see um the growth the aspirations that you have uh so we can go ahead and we'll start with sherry and then uh, go to honey as well yeah I want to say real quick too, before we get to the future, one of the biggest challenges that I think is really important right now to express is if you think about this whole thing logically, over the last thousands of years, when we went from a beautiful divine feminine, um, you know, Lemuria and even into Atlantis, and then we we kind of flip-flopped in the Roman Empire and and moving forward into this like very masculine controlled you know women feminine suppressed society that was their first goal or their first anchor point to diminish our sovereignty but what happened next is they really took us out of the right brain like you mentioned coloring and our imagination our creation our creative side and really inserted this program of left brain left brain uh, everything's analytical logical um you know, math and, and all of these really uh, structured programming, especially with children, um, they took, they take all of the fun out of school and it's all just memorization tests. It's just left brain, left brain, left brain. So if you think about that, the biggest challenge, I think, in our society of change, the, the, the resistance of change is that people are so logically programmed that there are so many people that are not spiritually open. Um, and that could also be from past lives of, of, of just being burned at the stake or being ridiculed and being called a magician or this or, or whatever that trauma is. So we have a huge collective group of, of people that are raised in a very masculine dominant society, very left brain, logical absence of spirituality, but okay in the religious aspect, like, cause again, that's control, control, control. So it's limited. So the issue I'm seeing the most are the people who aren't spiritually open because they're afraid of the woo-woo element of it or the, the devilish 
uh, connection, all these things that they lie about, you know, that they say that what, what we do in the spiritual side is actually demonic and dark. Uh, again, all part of the manipulation. So my biggest thing that I learned in my journey, I think in the last couple of years is not all star seeds are spiritual and that is by design. So there are a lot of star seeds that volunteer to come into this planet who will never be spiritual beings. They're not going to be like me with, you know, talking about crystals and Reiki and energy healing and the higher self and all of this beautiful stuff that I love to talk about. They're going to insert themselves with all the logically mind people, the men in the corporate offices that are not interested at all in this stuff. They don't even believe in it. And they're going to be able to guide them and awaken them in a different way. It's almost like a backdoor entrance where they work with their logical mind to break them free of the pattern so that they can detach from the programming in the, in, in the 3D in a very different way. So there's a large demographic of star seeds that are on this planet right now working a side gig where they're they're targeting and they're tackling because I'm like, I will refuse to debate people. I am not going to change your mind. I'm not going to sit there and try to convince anyone of anything. It's not my personality and I don't even want to do that. But so who's going to go and talk to those people that are hard headed? It's the people who are the starseeds that choose to go into that arena, but they're not going to talk to them like I would. They're going to talk to them in a completely different way and open their eyes and, and convince them encourage them to think a little bit different. So you get out of the loop of repetition and you break patterns and then you start seeing different pathways. And it's beautiful to me that I didn't even think about that. And I learned about it through my sessions with people that are doing it. And I, I was even surprised to, I don't even, I didn't talk about that in the last book because I didn't really know much about it, but I'm talking about it in my new book coming out uh, because it's a huge part of our evolution. So I just wanted to uh, bring that up right now because it's extremely important. Um, so I don't want to monopolize the time. So maybe, honey, you could talk about where we're going in the future to break it up. And then I'll come back and talk about what I'm doing. But I, I think that's really important to bring up right now because it's it's that, that's how we're um, awakening so many more people than we did in the past by doing it in a different way. Like honey said, we failed in essence so many times. This is this is one way we have succeeded by doing it, you know, in a few different ways. Mm hmm. There's also a lot of walk-ins happening during oh, the yeah. time. So that is a huge part of it too. And people are, they're walking into somebody that's really analytical, but they're able to just break loose a little bit so that that person still has mm -hmm. the lingo, but they also have the ability to relate it to something up here, something yeah. in the astral. But um, what I'm doing is I'm creating a learning center. And right now it's just online and it's mostly for grownups. But I would love to see it expand to grownups bringing their children in the future. But what I'm focused on is creativity because that's how we get to who we really are. I would like to see a lot of self-sustainability for lack of a better word, but how to build your own house, how to build, you know, a community, how to do all the things that we don't really know how to do yet necessarily. And I think we're going to have the free energy to go along with that and then healing. So we also have to think about when we're doing healing is how to heal the relationship how to not have these old expectations that we've had in the past where we're attaching a cord basically to our spouse and saying, if you act like this, then I'm going to love you. All this conditional love that we've been practicing needs to go away. And I think a lot of this is going to be people peeling away the layers of programming for themselves. And when they do that, they're going to be able to process better and also not have the judgments that we've been doing. Yeah. So we've been so focused on judging each other and that's really important. And even during the movement that we've been in that there's been tons of judgment on each other and I can see it still happening right now, which means the people that are like forcefully judging others, they are not healed within themselves. 
So it's important to think about, well, is this person healed or not? Do I want to listen to that or not as well? And are they speaking through a wound? But I think eventually these centers will turn into beautiful communities. And I also see that the parallels are probably going to be separated mostly into your own soul group for a little while. So your soul group will be able to interact and communicate in such a beautiful way that you won't have all that confusion. Because just like Sherry said, it's very hard to bridge the gap in a wide gap of consciousness. So mm -hmm. if you think about that scale, I can't remember who did it, um, but the consciousness scale, if you have to go through two, if there's two um, separating, two steps separating, you're not gonna make a difference for the person that's three levels below or three levels above you're not going to be able to understand each other. So it's really important to allow people and not judge them and just allow them to get there when they get there. Because the people we're interacting with now are the ones that have chosen to ascend. The ones that have chosen not to ascend, they're really not very visible to us anymore. So we're really on a track where things are going to get better every day. And I think remembering that's really important and enjoying and being grateful for the day that you're given, even if the energy is wearing you out, <laughs> which I have found to be a big thing. But knowing just like shadow work, if we're going through a big energy surge, that surge is pushing programming out of us out of the human body. So be grateful for that too, because really it's something you don't have to work on later. But if you're consciously working on stuff, it's going to go easier too. So that's yeah. where I see it. I see amazing things in the future. And us joining the galactic community. And I see this happening over the next several years. But I don't do really big predictions anymore because I've learned that the parallels tend to interfere. <laughs> so I, you know, we're at a very volatile time right now where things are switching just like this. And the road you took, this happened to me the other day, the road you took to get there, we drove for three hours, is not the same road, even if it's the same route that you take to get back. So some of those curves might not be there anymore. Definitely. Yep. Wow. Yeah, no, that is very telling. Um, I had a couple weeks in the gym where the people changed. <laughs> and then yeah. after a while, the, the same people that were there at the beginning came back. And I, uh, you know, I tried to get in there. But I like what you said, both of you have said this, that um, you have this resistance <clears throat> that happens during this um, evolution of your soul. And we're here for the resistance. Think about it from a working out perspective. If you don't go into um, the gym and you work the muscles and they won't get stronger, you're actually breaking the muscle down in order to build it up. And that's what our soul is doing here on the planet. And it's been doing it for a long time through polarity, like you said, um, honey, in the past. And now we're pretty much done with polarity. We're here. Not that we're not working out anymore, but we're just finding a different way to incorporate it. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, both of you have, have talked about those those hard days, the bad days. And I heard a, a saying that, uh, or a quote that is just beautiful. One bad day doesn't mean a bad lifetime. Oh. And yeah, there's a lot of bad days in fertility, infertility, and childbirth. There is, you know, the miscarriage, the stillbirth, and, you know, the choice to abort. And that is one big bad day but that doesn't mean a bad lifetime. And that's what I would like to create as I'm creating everything on my platform to make people, you know, realize that in the, in the hardest times where you, you know, are you just feeling defeated and devastated and your body gave up on you somewhere in there, there's this contract 
mm-hmm. that this is your beginning of waking up. I know my two children, rambunctious as they may be, beautiful and amazing, and they came here to wake me up. And I woke up right, my son was born um, March 13th, 2020. And we all know what happened during that year and that month. And it was a it was a big wake up call for me and everything that's happened um, through that. Yeah. So, yeah. So with that, for me, just to talk about where you're headed, Cherry, and uh, the Aramis Learning Center and all of the beautiful things that you're working on as well. Yes, um, I am finishing up um, this part two to the last book. So Courage to Change the Freedom Movement is coming out this year. I'm really excited because it's a continuation of that that book uh, and more more things that I've learned through the sessions, um, things that like I talked about today that I didn't know about. I'm just, I I can't believe how much I look back after like a month and I, I'm like, man, I learned so many things through the sessions that I do with people. It's absolutely incredible. So clearly I have a contract, so contract with all the people that I do sessions with that's mutual. It's mutually beneficial because what I do is I help them see uh, the puzzle pieces they can't see and help them walk away feeling empowered and and like they have the information and and, and the knowledge that they were missing. And then I gain the in, that information from their intimate life that I put in this catalog of knowledge that I have of the collective. Uh, and it's just beautiful, the, the energy exchange between the both. So um, I, I really enjoy the one-on-ones that I do, the soul readings that I do every single day. Well, not every day, but the days that I do those is really how I know most of what I know because like honey I'm, I'm not gonna sit there I'm not gonna be sitting in my house like a psychic and trying to prophesy like I'm not Sylvia Brown I'm not trying to I loved I used to love Sylvia Brown back in the day and, and I was like I want to be her one day and I don't want to be her because I realize I'm just me I'm my own thing um but I I really just I enjoy the sessions that I have with people because I feel like there's no other way I could get that knowledge for for what I need and for what I use it for um, so that's a huge part of my journey, but Aramis Creative Learning Center is, is really my passion. So my daughter, um, coming into my life and opening up a part, part of me that I would not have even get, I mean, if you met me 10 years ago and you told me you're coming from the future and I have a, have a learning center down the line, I would have been like, that's a lie. There's no way I would, because I was not interested in that 10 years ago. And that's terrible to say, but like, I wasn't in my radar. I was doing something completely different. I was doing hypnobirthing and all these other things. So um, now it's 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 clear to me and everything is brought, everything that has happened to me up until this point has been for a reason to prepare me for the next chapter and in my book, in my life, my book, in my life. And so um, what's happening with Aramis? So we have, we're going into our fourth year. We've added new mentors. We are continuing to offer classes monthly that are completely different than the previous month. We never do anything the same. It's just whatever we feel is 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 what the what children need to learn right now and what the mentors are able to offer. We put it out there, and it's every month. It's new topics, um, or it's an expansion of topics that we've already done. Um, the Aramis Creative Learning Center physical space will open in. West Palm Beach vicinity, somewhere in this county. Um, hope I'm. I really am manifesting at least to have the the land this year, 2024. I'm doing everything in my power to manifest that into reality in the in this time matrix, so it can be in 2024, so that we can um, open within 2025 and get things going in a physical sense here, and then we can expand um, into Texas, Colorado. Uh, North Carolina and other states that we have on our list to kind of do those areas first um, and then internationally. So we have a lot of projects going on. And um, if anyone is interested in being an angel investor, donor, or to uh, to give donations on a small scale to keep us going, we have the Aramis Collective, which is a nonprofit. Um, and that's how we pay for the production of the, all the children's books that I've made. Uh, the cartoon animation series and just a lot of the stuff that we've done has been funded through generous donations, um, which I'm so grateful for the support of the community, because without the community, none of us would be able to do any of the work that we're doing. So I am so eternally grateful for the support for the Aramis Collective and also the um, learning center that we have. 
So um, hopefully projecting moving forward, humanity in general, I feel like 2024 is a continuation of 2023 with healing. So people are less resistant and they're embracing and surrendering to the healing. It's tricky. It's uncomfortable. We're losing friends. We're losing family, but we're gaining new soul, our, our soul families coming into our life, better friendships that are more in our alignment with our highest good. Um, we're re and we're realizing that and seeing evidence of it later where we say, oh man, that friend wasn't good for me. That was a toxic relationship. This is what friendship looks like. And, and we're seeing evidence of that where people are finding their tribe now. Um, and tribe doesn't always mean family. And that's a really hard thing for people to get to, to, to go through that because they're so bound by the blood and the connection that they'll maintain the toxic relationships with certain people, their sister, their parent, their, you know, cousin, somebody in their family, just because it's blood and they let them get away with things. And at some point we have to learn that maybe the best thing for everybody involved is to walk away. I always say it's not always, it doesn't always mean forever, goodbye forever. It's just bye for right now. You don't know once you grow separately, how much can happen. And then later on, you might find your way back to each other. But I think that's my biggest lesson is there are people in my life that I've cut out um, that other people don't understand how I could do that. But I have grown tremendously since I've done that. And I've become such a better version of myself that I will always love them. And maybe we'll find our way back to each other. But the judge, we got to stop the judgment because no one can understand what choices I've made um, and why I've done it and how it's helped me or not helped me. But that's my decision. So I really did the, the judgment thing. We got to let go. Forgiveness and being less judgmental as a collective because we just don't understand anyone's journey. And everybody likes to give their two cents. Oh, if that was me, I would do that. But you don't actually know until you're in that situation, living that life up until that point with all the variables, all the information, you have no idea what you would do. So that's a big part of our growth of 2024 is releasing judgment, forgiveness, moving on, creating boundaries, healing, expanding our consciousness um, and being open to what's coming next, which is absolutely beautiful and expansive what I see in the future, what I see in the future. But right now we're still very much in the thick of the healing phase. And that's what 4D is. We're in the fourth dimension right now in between the third and the fifth and we're healing. Absolutely. Uh, we're, yeah. and we're creating that bridge. Uh, to So to create a bridge in this conversation to towards the final part of it, um, all three of us started to put ourselves out there. Um, whether you want to call it a humanitarian project, your business, your community, uh, your learning center, we, we all had to go through that hump of fear. Uh, so from an advice perspective on the folks watching, and we could do a whole video about this, uh, <laughs> trying to navigate, you know, starting a YouTube channel, starting a, a, a Facebook and uh, all of the things, uh, TikTok and learning how to make TikTok videos. I'm still working on that. But um, not just the, you know, technical aspects, but if we could give some advice for folks that have a vision of their life purpose, maybe they don't even know what the life purpose is yet, but they're getting there and they, you know, they get to jump on YouTube, jump on um, Rumble and look at our videos and giving us some advice on how to take it to that next level so that they're ready when the humanitarian funds eventually show up and uh, we're there. We don't want to wait for those funds. We want to start ahead. So mm -hmm. I want to start with you, honey, and then we'll talk to Sherry about uh, some just a word of advice um, in closing. The first thing I would do is try and get in touch with your soul, your higher self, through some sort of automatic writing, whether it's a pendulum, whatever it is, and try and figure out what exactly you're being guided to do. And then you have to move your ego out of the way. So if you don't know how to heal that part of yourself, go through that process. And I would definitely seek that out if you don't. But to get rid of the fear of being seen the fear of whatever it is that's in your way, that limiting belief, and it could be like five, you know, who knows how many it is. But if you can get rid of that, then that is going to help you be able to actually step out there. I know for me, I had been through what I call the death of ego probably a couple months before I was told, get on YouTube. And I had massive visions come in 
when that happened. And I didn't want to get on YouTube. I was not excited to be on camera and talking about the weird visions that had come in because I wasn't sure how people would receive them. But I did it because I knew that was my life's path. And I knew that my soul was asking me to step out of my comfort zone. Yeah. So it really wasn't a matter of, oh, I'm not going to do it because that's too scary. It took me about a month to actually do it, but it was partially preparation, figuring out some of the tech, you know, that kind of stuff. But I knew I had to do it because that's what I was being asked to do. And part of it is just letting go of always feeling like you have to be in control of everything and the outcome of everything. And instead having faith to take it step by step, follow the signs and go forward. Because we don't know ultimately where we're gonna go because no one knows. Everything is switching to constantly for us to really know. So we're going on faith and we're taking one step at a time. Yeah, that is beautiful. Thank yeah, you. I love the faith and one step at a time. Those are, those are fundamental. I believe, you know, I think we're so programmed since we are young to care so much about what other people think mm -hmm. about, and everybody has something to say about what you're doing. And my biggest fear and same thing is so funny, honey, that you said that because um, my guys pushed me to start a YouTube channel. I am like, people who know me, they're like, I can't even believe you're doing that. Like, I'm very shy. People in my community don't know what I'm doing unless they ask. And when I'm out at the store, like I'm not talking to anybody. And I'm and my husband drives me crazy because he's that extrovert that wants to talk to everybody at the grocery store. And he's talk. And I'm like, can you please not talk to anybody today? Can we just go run an errand and come back home? Like, I don't, I don't want that interaction because it takes a lot out of me emotionally and mentally and energetically. And I like to be by myself. So it was really hard and I didn't want, I resisted. And I said, I'm not doing that. I'm not putting myself out there, but I realized that I cared too much about what other people were going to think about what I said. Oh, well, are they still going to like me? Are they going to call me weird? Are they going to talk about me behind my back? Are they going to accept what I'm saying? Are they going to believe it? And I was so worried about all these things that I can't control. I couldn't control that. I can't control who's going to watch my channel. I couldn't control if they were going to like it or not. And finally, my guides basically bumped me over the head with like, stop that. You know, you have, you, you're spiraling. And as soon as I centered and balanced myself and I said, you know what? Okay. I can, what, how I can control the narrative is that I'm going to attract the listeners and the viewers that are in alignment with what I'm saying only so that I hopefully will uh, not attract the bots and the negative comments because the negative comments in the beginning crushed me. They truly crushed me because I was feel I was I was insecure, not about what I was saying, but my place, my role I was playing. Like, who are you actually good enough to 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 give advice to people? You know, all those negative thoughts that you have, um, and they were playing off of my insecurities. So eventually, I just said, I'm only going to attract the like minded people. And um, those that need to hear what I have to say. And every time I would do a video, I would I would pray before and I would say only I'm only saying things that are of the highest good of humanity and what they need to hear at this time for their highest good and my highest good. And I had this whole ceremony and, and then I had to surrender. And then I said, you know what, I'm going to put it on. And, you know, to this day, I've never watched a video or an interview I've ever done. I can't watch myself too. So all these years later, I have 200 videos on my channel and I've never watched one. Um, and that's how I, cause I will, I can't go back and watch myself. Uh, so I've surrendered. I accept what I said is for the highest good of those watching. And then I move on and I don't look back. Uh, so if anybody is trying to figure out their role or, you know, just get past the insecurities first and, and there are people that can benefit from what you know, and you do have something that other people need, just like mm -hmm. you are looking towards other people for advice. All of us have that wisdom within us, but I think we get so stuck in worrying about what everyone else is going to think, or will our family be embarrassed, or will my husband think I'm weird, or whatever it may be, those irrational thoughts that we have uh, stem from the 3D. And so we go beyond the 3D, we surrender, and we tap into a much higher density, like Sunny said, uh, I console with my soul, and my soul is running the show.
then you can't be misguided and you can't be misled. So you follow your heart and you create an affirmation that everything I do moving forward is in the highest alignment for my highest good and, and humanity's highest good. And so it is. That's it. And I don't accept anything less than that. So that's kind of what I do on a daily basis. I continue to check in and say everything that I do today is for the highest good of myself, my family, and the, and whoever I'm working with, my clients, or if I'm going to do a video, so the collective or the community or my daughter's homeschool pod or whatever it is, I put that out there. I put that energy out there that I'm clear on what my intentions are, what I'm manifesting, and also what I'm attracting because our thoughts can dictate or work against us if we're projecting one thing but thinking another. Um, so it's all about being present in the moment and being mindful about your thoughts and um, just surrendering to the process. Yes, absolutely. Thank you both for sharing that because and I needed I needed to hear that. That was more for a question uh, and answer for me. And I'm <laughs> sure everyone appreciates uh, that if you're on this journey. I think we're all on this journey, whether it's quiet or uh, robust, uh, as in going on to a YouTube channel and sharing. Uh, for me, the advice would be to honor your no and know what you're capable of, but honor your no. I was on the, mm -hmm. in the car with my four-year-old this morning and I asked him, what's your favorite word, yes or no? And he said, no, mommy. I'm like, okay, of course the toddler is gonna say no. We have learned how to say no. We learned, we knew how to say no at the beginning of our life. And then we slowly stopped saying no. And your no turns into a yes to something else. So no to fear, yes to starting your humanitarian project. For me, it's the, my first no was, then no, I'm gonna reject the gynecologist's advice to just get an epidural and a, and a Tylenol and just wing it and see how it goes. Cause I knew there was something more. And the no turned into, uh, no, I don't want to um, have another hospital birth. Well, I was having the hospital birth and I was looking around and I was looking around and I'm thinking I could have done this at home. This is, you know, so saying yes to home birth and no to another hospital birth. And when we had the home birth and my son was six weeks early and that happens, uh, and I was in, you know, right at my front door uh, on my hands and knees and my husband was on the phone with the uh, the 911 operator, which I ended up getting that call and giving, giving it to him for Father's Day. Um, I heard the operator say, okay, I need her flat on her back. And I didn't oh. say no, but Honey, I was thinking, no, I was screaming, no, in my head. I'm on my turf. I am not going to get flat on my back and throw my pelvic floor out like I did in the hospital and then have to have all of these medications just to get back to my normal. Uh, with the second birth, I just needed a Tylenol and I was good to go because of the, the uterus contracting. It wasn't even the actual birth. Yes. So just continuing to say no. And a lot of us have said no to a lot of products and concoctions that have happened in the past couple of years. And that's how we got our backbone back to move on to the next level. And I've said this in a lot of videos um, with, with Honey and some of the other folks that I've worked with uh, and done videos with, but they tried to bury us. They forgot we were seeds. And we are going to take it to that next level, whether they like it or not. I don't think they are around anymore, but maybe they is our fear and we have to transmute that. And we're doing that. And just do one little thing every day. Uh, start a Facebook group and put a quote on there. Uh, start a YouTube channel or an Instagram or TikTok and do a very simple video. You don't have to put your, your face on video yet. If, uh, you know, I have some days where I just, I don't do anything <laughs> and that's okay, but I know I have to show up every day and it's those little bite-sized steps that take us to the next level. Mm -hmm. So this was beautiful. We could have taken all the little chunks of topics and created a whole video <laughs> and uh, hopefully we'll be able to get together again in the future. But uh, honey and Sherry, thank you so much. This mm -hmm. divine feminine connection, not just talking about um, the you know, the childbirth aspect of it, which is what I love to talk to. I know Sherry, you love to talk about it too, but that just the whole aspect of where we're headed in this ascension process. This was a beautiful conversation and I'm so glad to have both of you here yes. to talk. Yeah. With. Thank you for yeah. having me. I, I enjoyed this very much. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, me we as can... well. It was a lot of fun and Wonderful. great to meet you, Sherry. Yes, you yeah. as well. I love everything you were saying. I resonate so much.
Great. And so our links will be uh, in the respective videos, you know, what, no matter where you're uh, finding this. I am still going through my process of my website and uh, my products. So for now, if you're just being introduced to me, Dana, with at From Fertility to Delivery on TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, and uh, Facebook, and also Rumble, just go ahead and binge my videos and get to know more about me. And of course, get to know more about um, Sherry and Honey. And we'll make sure we have the links in the description. Lovely. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you. Thanks for watching, everybody. Thank you. Bye -bye.